Hello and welcome to a retrospective on this Merlin electronic game here. A funny story about this, I was watching a video that someone was doing, I'm not quite sure who it was now, one of my favourite channels anyway, um, it was a while ago and I was really, you know, wishing that I had one and I mean when these first came out I remember as a kid a friend of mine had one of these and I was so envious, I just so wanted one of these. And uh, I was rummaging through my uh, bits and pieces looking for some Atari uh, ST gear. I came across a box labelled Old Toys and in the box was this. I'd forgotten that I'd uh, picked this up somewhere. I can't remember when, it was a while ago now, but uh, yeah, obviously long enough for me to forget about it. And um, you can see there the, you know, the box is pretty well beaten up there. Yeah, six electronic games. Vocabulary of Space Age Sounds, Powerful Computer Brain. Here's some of the marketing spiel here. Can you outsmart Merlin? He's remarkably intelligent with lights, powerful computer brain, and a vocabulary of 20 different sounds. He challenges you to beat him at these six games of strategy, memory, and skill. You can see the six games there, Tic-Tac-Toe, Music Machine, Echo, Blackjack 13, uh, Magic Square and Mind Bender. Now, if we have a look at the game itself, it looks like a uh, 70s style cell phone or something, really, doesn't it? <laughs> like an earpiece here and a microphone here, but uh, it's not a cell phone. Uh, this one here has got an issue, though, if we have a look. Here, crusty, very crusty battery corrosion there. So I'll take this apart and let's see if we can clean up the corrosion there and get any life out of this little beastie. Looks like we've got two posi drive screws there. Uh, just in case you don't know the difference, a posi drive screw can be identified by it looks like a Phillips. But you'll see in between the cross there, hopefully that'll come through on the camera there, there are little lines, tiny little lines heading outwards to the outer circumference there in between. And they are, that's indicating that it's a posi drive. And if you have a close look at a posi drive screwdriver, as opposed to a Phillips screwdriver, so we've got posi drive on the top here and Phillips here. You can see the posi drive there has a couple of little flutes in between each of the wings there. Whereas the Phillips doesn't have those little flutes. I mean, yeah, some people say it's pedantic to uh, use a, uh, you know, a dedicated posi drive screwdriver on a posi drive screw, but um, I'd like to because what happens is and you can see it a little bit here, I think, is when someone's used a Phillips screwdriver on a posi drive screw, it kind of damages the, the inner part here. And eventually, if it's been screwed and unscrewed often enough, uh, the damage gets uh, quite obvious and, you know, the head of the screw gets quite damaged there. Yeah, I've seen them get to the point where they're kind of almost stripped out. Yeah, I mean, if you have got a posi drive screwdriver, use it I would say if if not uh, you know you could use a Phillips at a pinch but just as long as you're aware that it will damage the screw let's remove those two there and does that just yep pulls apart like so and we've got our battery contacts there just looking at how these come out, they will probably slide out. And so what I want to do is I want to remove the, the tabs here. There's tabs on this side here as well, just so that I can get them into a, a vinegar, so, um, you know, like a pure vinegar there just to um, get rid of that corrosion. Okay, I can see that these little tabs will push out here. So just close those up with a pair of pliers there. And that should allow us to push each tab out there. 
they're fairly bendable so they should just pop out oh that one's pretty crusty they should just push through oops try not to bend it oh, that one's a bit stubborn those two that one there is going to push out just trying to that one's a little bit stubborn yeah there we go that's pushed through there these ones here they have a little tab that i think if we push that little tab out push this tab across here there we go push it through and then push it through and bring it back out there there we go it's a positive there so we could actually just hook the power supply up and make sure that this unit's working I guess before I go too far I'll get these tabs out anyway so these crusty ones here they should be ready to just uh, gently remove there that one two three there nice and easy to service that's great okay one there yeah I might pay to wash the casing out here as well okay hooked up the power supply here I've uh, set the current limit at 100 milliamps I initially set it at 50 but it wasn't quite enough to run the unit so I've set it at 100 milliamps current limit 9 volts yep got something there I have no idea how to use this so new game So it's working. I'm not sure what I'm supposed to be doing here. Okay, so let's go ahead and we'll clean these up here. I'll just uh, throw those in there, get them nice and clean. Just get a cotton bud and try and neutralize some of this corrosion here. A bit nasty. I'll just let that soak in a little bit there and then I'll give that a wash up in the sink. Let's just have a wee look at this here. This is probably the worst one here. I think that's starting to clean up there. Okay. I'll just give these a little bit of a help, helping hand here, just a, a very fine, it's a, I think that's brass, brass bristled brush. Let's give that a little bit of a helping hand there. Yeah, it's quite stubborn. Uh, slowly working away at it. Uh, that's going to take a little bit to clean up there, so I'll, I'll come back when that's all cleaned up. But... You, you know, you get the idea there. I'm just uh, brushing away there. I might scrape with the screwdriver there a little bit. So I'll be right back. Now the, the little uh, battery tabs here, they turned out pretty good. I actually scraped the really stubborn, thick corrosion or uh, oxidization off with a screwdriver like this one here. And then I just followed up with this uh, brush here you know it's it's come up pretty clean that should be fine there now so I've got all of the little uh, battery tabs here cleaned up pretty much just a couple of wee touch-ups there yeah that's looking pretty clean there now just a very small amount of residue here just on the plastic there I'll give that a a little bit of a scrape off there that's 
quite stubborn that. It's almost like it's slightly eaten into the plastic there. And so we'll go ahead and reassemble here. This one there. I'll put the uh, corroded ones back into different places, I think, just to uh, sort of spread the spread the load, if you like. And that one there. Let's use this little screwdriver here. Let's carefully bend those out. Just enough to stop them from falling back through the plastic there. Actually, can give them a little push from the back there as well. That one needs a little bit more. Just like that. Okay, and then we're ready to bring the terminals through here make sure we get this the right way that way that's our positive and our negative I'm just going to carefully bend these back into shape here just uh, they got a little bit deformed when I took them out there just push back down onto the into place there over the plastic and it should latch in the other side there Sorry, had my thumb on the way. <laughs> yeah, so you can see it just latches over the little plastic ledge there. And just bend the tabs back into shape there and then just slide that one over. Oi, what are you doing? Cat. And it's latched over the plastic on the other side there, the little ledge there. Pretty good there. Little DC barrel jack there. I'm assuming that's a DC barrel jack. It's ready to put the screws back in there. And a handy little tip if you didn't already know is to reverse the screw until it drops into the threads. You might be able to see here the thread will drop in. You can actually hear it there and at that point you start screwing and that way you know that the screw threads are going to go back in and screw into the original plastic threads handy tip for uh, you know not damaging your plastic threads there otherwise eventually the plastic threads will just strip out and um, you'll end up with no way of uh, being able to screw the screw back into its hole it'll just uh, spin and spin and spin uh, it doesn't have to be overly tight six double a alkalines and slide the battery cover back on here that and Nothing. Nothing. I uh, better check those batteries. Eight point two. Is that not enough? Point seven. Yeah, 1.4. Okay. We should be good to go here. Okay. 
Oh, yeah, there we go. Running on batteries. All set to go there. So one uh, repaired Merlin made in New Zealand by Toll Toys New Zealand Limited Auckland. So yeah, yeah, we did make a few bits and pieces here in New Zealand back in the day. So I'll, uh, I'll download the manual. I don't have the actual physical manual, but uh, I'll download it and have a wee play. Yeah, so I hope you found that helpful and thank you very much for watching.